morning, my name is Shannon Brown, and as, as introduced, I'm president of the San Juan Teachers Association. I'm also a fifth grade teacher and a 2011 California Teacher of the Year. I'm here to talk to you about the teacher perspective on professional development. Um, it's a little bit redundant. You will hear some of the same threads that were expressed earlier. So to the people who um, spoke earlier, the two, panel, the two panels that spoke, thank you, and um, we're going to have some words afterwards. Okay, so the promise of Common Core. We all know that the standards in and of themselves will not be what we're hoping to transform our schools. Hmm. It's, it's not clicking to see, show what I want next. So we all know these very well, what we want students to be able to do, so I don't need to go over these things. But um, linking back to the comments that were shared earlier, I think this is critically important, that this is really about developing a 21st century education system. That we keep talking about what 21st century learning is gonna mean to our students, but it is an impossibility, and I will say that with absolute certainty, that we are going to transform what happens in the classroom if we don't systemically think differently about <coughs> education. So this is where the system change comes in. I stole a quote from Fullen and Hardgrave's Professional Capital. This pretty much captures a big component of where I will be going today with my slides and remarks. That we can't really expect the teachers in the classroom to create a 21st century environment, learning environment, and this they themselves are also having the same opportunity. So where are we starting from? We cannot ignore the context in which we are now having a systemic shift from, which is we're all recovering from NCLB. It did do some good things. It did. It, it rose It made us raise our awareness to the kids that we were not serving. But there are also a lot of consequences um, about the way it affected the cultures in our schools and the way people looked at things that we cannot ignore. So in those, some of the things that we're recovering from is that we were focused on getting answers and not on the thinking that got us there. That's a huge shift. That's not only going to be a shift for students, that's going to be a shift for our teachers as well. There was a focus on getting the one right answer. There was one right answer and you had to figure out what the test maker wanted you to figure out was the right answer and we had to help students frame those so instruction was also framed around that. The vast majority of the focus was on measuring student outcomes on the of learning and not on the for learning of what we need to be doing with students. And as mentioned earlier, one of the consequences was we got scripted curriculum like open court. So here's where we need to go from there. The three components of uh, professional development that are effective. So in the next several slides, I'm going to cover what the ingredients are, what the environment needs to be, and what other people mentioned earlier, which is time. So key ingredients. The practitioners, and you'll notice that um, as the presenters earlier commented, are all in the active position. So presenter, the practitioners are designing and leading areas of PD. We're harvesting the wisdom of the people who we already have, and we're helping them share best, best practices with each other. They're collaborating, you heard about this earlier as well. Collaboratively learning with their peers, but it does have to be job embedded. There's not enough time. We have too many things that we are trying to do. So we can't add one more thing to people's plate. So how do we embed this? I heard one of the suggestions earlier, which is have a principal come in and take your classroom so you can go work with a colleague. That is one idea. But there are other ones, and you can get together with other districts, as Maggie mentioned earlier. Caltern's another place to share opportunities with creative ways to do this. Actively engaged in their ongoing learning. We know sit and gets don't work. We can't have a six hour training at the beginning of the school year and think that's gonna do anything to impact practice. Developing a deeper understanding of both content and instructional practices. Again, it's not just the shift in content, it's how do those instructional practices dovetail with the content to actually mean there's gonna be a difference in um, the environment for students. And lastly, and I think um, I didn't call this out enough under recovering from NCLB, but connecting curriculum assessment and professional decision making. The practitioner in the classroom has to know and feel trust in and of themselves and from you all 
that they have the skills and the ability to meet the needs of the students in front of them. So we give them, we give, we have curriculum, we have assessments, but in that moment of teaching, you have to be able to adjust your instruction based on how the students are responding to you. You have to be able to look at the end of that lesson, at the end of that week, at the end of that unit, and say, what did they get and what did they not get and what do I need to do? You cannot give someone curriculum that does that. You cannot give someone a pacing guide that does that. We have to make sure that our professionals are building the capacity, the trust in themselves, that they do know how to do that. And if they don't, we have to make sure that we're collaborating with our colleagues to build those skills. That is going to equal the transformation in the classroom that we are hoping that Common Core is going to bring. <coughs> Supporting, supportive learning environment. This is as important as the ingredients. We are in an environment right now that we cannot ignore, which is there is a heavy, heavy pressure and focus on the individual teacher in the classroom. There has been a message that has been sent, it's keeping away from the blame components right now, that our teachers are not good enough and they're not doing a good enough job. And if they would just work harder and care more, then we would have better outcomes. That's out there. And as people in the classroom, we feel that. So this has to be a critical component of the professional development. The environment has to be one that is viewed of, that as the panel spoke of earlier, we are all in this together and we are all learning together. Nobody is going to do this perfectly. And in fact, if it looks like you're doing it perfectly, you're probably not doing it deeply enough. So we have to make sure we build an environment where people are willing to take risks. They're willing to say, I don't know, because we are saying to them, we want, we're all learning, nobody knows this. Because the alternative is this. We have people in every school and at every level who don't quite get certain components. Even the top level teachers in your district are going to be learning for years what it means to be teaching to the Common Core Standards. So we need to create an environment that allows everyone to be in a position that learning is not only welcomed, we expect you to make mistakes because that's the only way we're gonna actually learn about what works for kids. And lastly, time. We have to have the time to practice, learn, reflect, collaborate, and repeat. This is a never-ending process, you heard someone um, a comment earlier that this was going to be three years, five years. Um, so I thought I was going to make that slide. So we need, we need to have that expectation that needs to be communicated on a regular basis because everyone wants results now. It's our students in our classrooms today. Of course. Our goal is not to say, ah, we're not worried about the kids we're serving today. We're really about those, really concerned about the ones in three to five years. But there still has to be the understanding that it is going to take us time to re-equip and retool because of where we've come from. So there are some promising models, two of which you heard comments earlier, but there are a couple other ones I wanted to highlight. Um, in Palo Alto, California, but then also in Vertica, Canada, I actually had the opportunity three weeks ago to be part of a, a US delegation that went to Alberta, Canada to study the education system. And in talking to the practitioners there, one of the things that they shared that I think is particularly intriguing is they have an intra-district educator conference. And here's how they do it. They have teachers in charge at all the different grade levels and content areas, and they send out an email to everyone who's in that same group. And they say, all right, what are all the things that you are interested in or feel like you need additional support? They take that data, they figure out what the main ones are, then they push it back out to those same people and say, all right, here are the top three to five to however many things. Uh, which of you have the expertise and knowledge to teach these things to your colleagues? Talk about accountability. They then have one day a month, which I 
I know most of us don't have the resources to provide at this time, but one day a month where teachers come together and the professional development that is put on is by their colleagues in the content areas and on the topics and on the instructional practices that the practitioners have determined that they need help and support. It makes complete sense. Palo Alto has a very similar idea where the teachers submit their ideas to a TOSA, Teacher on Special Assignment. The Teacher on Special Assignment helps them think through various components and then they have a, they do it once a year right now, a professional development day where the teachers put on the and create the professional development and people get to choose which one they want to attend. Uh, in my own district, we have a very strong collaborative relationship with the district in San Juan and we have uh, a promising model of site autonomy, where each school site gets to determine their own professional development based on the conversations the leadership team has with the rest of the staff. Now these are promising models because that doesn't mean we figured everything out yet. In San Juan, we have some very high functioning schools where this works really well, and we have some schools that we are figuring out, okay, how do we make sure that this is at the same level systemically? So we don't have all of the answers, but they are some ways to think differently about professional development rather than the district determining what they think teachers need. Very much like students asking students what they need to support. So this is a quote I stole from Linda Darling Hammond about how much time we think it's going to take. And I will close with this. Sustainable systems change. It cannot be done to us or for us. It can only be done with us and by us. So this is about systemic change so that it is sustainable and we can actually see to fruition the promise of what we believe Common Core will be for our students. Thank you.